It's not uncommon when designing a production system that you have a choice in processes. Now, what do I mean by that? Say that in a production system you need to paint something, the paint needs to be a certain thickness. Well, you say we could uh, brush the paint on by hand or we could spray it on in a spray booth. I just named two different processes, hand brushing versus spraying in a uh, uh, spray booth. The process capability index, which is what this question is asking about, is essentially a score to determine if a certain process, like brush it on by hand, is actually a good idea with respect to what you're actually trying to produce. Now, let's take a look at this problem. A certain product can weigh no more than 1.001 and no less than 0.998 ounces by design. Okay, what is the maximum natural variation a process can have to be considered capable of supporting these design specifications? Ah, the process capability index, abbreviated capital C sub P, is the score that would tell us that. Now, first off, what's the formula for it? Okay, the process capability index is a ratio, in essence. In the numerator is the design specification width, what by design you can tolerate. And in the denominator, it's often explained as the natural width of the process. Um, all right, now, that's one form of the formula, but you know, actually we, we can be more specific. Design specification width, I can see that actually in this short problem. That business about the 1.001 and the 0 0.98, that's, it's talking about by design. It can tolerate that width. All right, but what's this natural width of the process? Oh, another way to state this particular formula for the process capability index is now it's the same business in the numerator design specification width that's just information you have to have but it's agreed upon that another way to characterize the natural width of a process is six times the standard deviation in the variation in that process six times the standard deviation six sigma that's where we get that very familiar phrase in quality control six sigma all right, now wait. What is this question asking? It's asking if we're picking a process, what's the maximum natural variation it can have in order to support this particular product by design? Oh, wait. How does the process capability index tell you if a process is a good idea or not in order to produce a certain product? The, the capability index has to be C sub P greater than or equal to 1 to be considered capable. If you were to calculate this ratio for some certain process, that score has to come out greater than or equal to 1. Actually, it's better to be greater than equal, you know, like equal to 1. Um, okay, theoretically, that's okay. It's a little dodgy. But it's, the score has got to achieve at least 1 in order for the process to get the nod. Yeah, okay. Looks like it's capable of supporting production of that product. All right, so... What we want to do is for this particular product, we want to explore the process capability index. Uh, some of the information we have, because up here, design specification width. We were told that this product couldn't weigh any more than 1.001 ounces, and it couldn't weigh any less than 0.998 ounces, right? That's what was reported to us, which means that I'm just calculating the difference between those two numbers. The design specification width is 0.003 ounces. That's what we mean by design specification. That's all it will tolerate in between. Oh, okay. So if you had some certain process and you were kind of auditioning it for this product, then the process capability index, that is definitely what would go in the numerator. In the denominator, it would be six times the standard deviation in the process. Uh, but we don't have any particular process, any information on the standard deviation. Oh, but we're asking ourselves what's the maximum natural variation, and that's what the standard deviation in the process represents. 
such that the process would be considered capable, meaning that this result would be greater than or equal to 1. Oh, now this I can do because now I only have one unknown, and the one unknown is the one thing that the question is asking about. Okay, what is the most that that number could be such that all this works out happily to greater than or equal to 1? Well, now it just becomes algebra. Let's see, I could multiply here both sides by 6 sigma. That means that this is when is 0.03 greater than or equal to 1 times 6 sigma, 6 sigma, which means that the sigma needs to be greater than or equal to, I'm just going to divide both sides by 6. So 0.003 divided by 6, I get 0 0.0005. There's your answer. If you are looking at a particular process to support this particular product we've been told about. The standard deviation in that process is natural variability can't be any greater than 0 0.0005 ounces in order for that process to be considered capable of supporting this particular product.